Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Hayadriva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Hayadriva Hari 
yamuna jivana heli parayana manasa chandra chakora Yamuna jivana heli parayana Manasa Chandra Chakohara Namashura Ras Ko Krishna Yas Rako Vachana Manam Mohara Namachuraras go Krishna yas Rako Vatana Manamohora Nitai go Hari go Hari go Hari go Nitai go Hari go Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 1, Sloka number 10. Yado Pahuto Bhavanam Pravishto Mantraya Prishta Kila Purvajena Utaha Tan Mantradrisham Varian Yan, Yan Mantrino Vaidurikam Vadanti Yadopahuto Bhavanam Pravishto Mantraya Prashta Kilapur Vajena Atahatan mantra drisham varyam varyan Yan mantrino vaidur hikam vadanti Yado pahuto bhavanam pravishto Mantraya Prishta Kila Purva Jena 
Atahatan mantra trisham varayan Atahatan mantra trisham varayan Yan mantri no vaidurikam vadanti Yan mantri no vaidurikam vadanti Yada. Yada. When? Upa. Oh. <laughs> Just a minute, I'm sorry. Uh, Upahita was called by Bhavanam, the palace. Pravishta entered. Mantraya, Mantraya for consultation. Prishta asked by Kila, of course, Purvajena by the elder brother. Atta, thus, Aha said, Tut, that, Mantra, advice, Drisham. Just suitable. Just suitable. 
Variyan, excellent. Yat, that which. Mantrina, the ministers of state are expert politicians. Vaidurikam, instructions by Vidura. Vadanti, do they say? Translation and purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda. When Vidura was invited by his elder brother Dhritarashtra for consultation, he entered the house and gave instructions which were exactly to the point. His advice is well known and instructions by Vidura are approved by expert ministers of, of state. Purport. Political suggestions by Vidura are known as expert, just as in modern times Pandita Chanakya is considered the authority in good counsel in both political and moral instructions. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Katamayam Svapanantikam Bandeyam Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Satrajatam Sahagana Sarvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Shri E Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagadvati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Tapta Kanchana Gorange Vade Vrindavaneshwari Vrishavanu Siddhi Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Vaiva Chapadvita Nam Pavanivyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Deve Kauravani Prasharine Nirvisesha Shanyavani Pascha Chade Satani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gopaka Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So we're hearing about the situation in the palace in Hastinapur. Vidura had been invited to give some advice to Dhritarashtra in their home, in their palace. And Vidura is brother of Dhritarashtra. You could say he's the younger brother. Dhritarashtra was the eldest of the three brothers, Pandu the second and then Vidur, all conceived by the semen of Vyasadeva. Now Vidur is not a Brahmana. Usually in the Vedic culture the kings would have an assembly of Brahmanas to advise them. But it was understood that Vidura was very saintly. Of course, Vidura is Yamaraj, 
Yamaraj has come. He was cursed, but it was a blessing for him that he could come and uh, have some relief from his tedious occupation. You know, to be Yamaraj, not a very pleasant task. You have to punish a lot of sinful people. So he was cursed by Manduka Muni and it was a blessing for him. But at the same time, it was a struggle because he was, first of all, the son of a Sudra woman. So being brought up in the palace, he was not equal to his brothers. Uh, Pandu and Dhritarashtra, they were conceived in the womb of royal ladies. But Vidura was conceived in the womb of a Sudra woman. So he did not have the same status. But at the same time, he was respected because of his purity and because of his uh, honesty and his morality. He was given the respect of all the people in the palace. Certainly in a palace there would be a lot of intrigues and a lot of corruption and sense gratification, different people all plying to take advantage of their position for their sense gratification. But Vidura was a, a pure-hearted person. He did not have any very powerful material desires and therefore he was respected by everyone in the palace. And when there were problem, when there were issues to be solved, then his advice would be consulted. Of course, although his advice was heard, it was not always taken. And that is uh, maybe more frustrating frustrating than anything to be in that condition where you're asked for advice and although you give good advice and it's everyone knows it's a proper advice a proper thing to do but still people don't follow so this is a situation which is being described here traditionally in the Vedic culture there would be people who were brahmanas who would give advice. Vidura, as I said, was not a brahmana, but he was not brahmana by birth, but by his activities, by his character and qualities, he was as good as a brahmana. Lord Krishna established the social system as described in the Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Vidabhajantimam Gyaan, Chatur Vidabhajantimam, Chatur, how does it go? Chatur Vidabhajantimam, Guna Karma Vibhagasha, right? By Guna and Karma. According to Krishna said, I have created this system of Varna and Ashrams according to Guna and Karma, according to qualities and work, not Janma, but by Guna and Karma. So Vidura was a brahmana in the sense that by guna and karma he was like that. And that's why he was respected. So the tradition was that the kings would always respect the brahmanas and they would be happy to hear from them and take their advice. However, Dhritarashtra Although he had some respect for Vidura, he was more influenced by his son, unfortunately. And that was the problem for Dhritarashtra. Too much attachment to his own son. However, Vidura was doing his duty. He was asked to speak and he spoke the truth. As, as it was, he spoke according to the facts. So people do not always like to hear the truth. Sometimes the truth is very painful for us. 
But uh, Srila Prabhupada said, it is the duty of the devotee to speak. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes that uh, we should, when we, we sh that we should try to speak words which are pleasing. If we want to cultivate the mode of goodness, that is, we should speak words which are pleasing. Uh, however, Srila Prabhupada said, when it comes to preaching, then we're not required to follow that etiquette. Uh, there's a saying in Sanskrit, Satyam Bruyat Priyam Bruyat. Satyam Bruyat, that you, when we speak, we should speak in such a way that it is pleasing and at the same time truthful. So, Srila Prabhupada quoted this when he was dealing with uh, Srimati Morariji, the lady who had given him the passage on the ship to go to America. Because what happened was the devotees who were printing Back to Godhead had printed an excerpt from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And they printed the excerpt from the Chaitanya Charitamrita describing how Lord Chaitanya corrected Balaba Acharya. Now Balaba Acharya is known as Mahaprabhu and he is the head of the, the, the founder of the Pushti Mark. And Pushti Mark is very prominent in Bombay and Gujarat. There are many followers of Pushti Mark. They worship Krishna, but it's a different sampradaya. They are taking care, they are in charge of the worship of Srinathji. You can go to Nathdwara, which is on the edge of Rajasthan and Gujarat. And the deity is there of Srinathji. So this deity of Srinathji, very popular, many people go there and worship, especially the Gujarati people, people from Bombay. Actually Prabhupada said, he said, that deity belongs to us. He said it belongs to the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It was found by Madhavendra Puri. The deity of Srinathji was found by Madhavendra Puri on Govardhan Hill and it was worshipped there for some time. But at some point the worship was given to the sons of Balabhacharya. Balabhacharya was a contemporary of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Balabhacharya was a, a devotee and a Sanskrit scholar. And he wrote also commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. So he was a very saintly person. But when he met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was very attracted and very impressed with the exalted nature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You can read in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how they, the two met. One place they met was at Prayag, Prayagraj, and you know where the Ganges meets the Yamuna. Lord Chaitanya was there and he met with Balabhacharya. Balabhacharya had a house just near at Prayag and uh, he met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya was in ecstasy because he, when he saw the water of the Yamuna, he was reminded of Lord Krishna. And he thought the Yamuna is the same color as Lord Krishna. And at some point even Lord Chaitanya dived into the Yamuna. So Balabha Acharya was greatly impressed to see the exalted level of consciousness of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the two were friends. They were friends. Later on, Balabhacharya wrote his commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. 
and he brought it to Jagannath Puri and he, he was saying that my commentary is better than the Swami, better than Sridhar Swami. Sridhar Swami was the original commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam. And Balabha Acharya had written his commentary and he came there and he said, my commentary is better than, his, than, than Swami's commentary. So Lord Chaitanya pointed out to him, he said that that, that is like a prostitute because the word Swami can also mean husband, you see? So you think you're better than your husband, that is not good, that is not proper thing to, to say. You shouldn't try to surpass your husband, Swami. And in this way Lord Chaitanya was correcting the statement of Baba Acharya. And Prabhupada points out that a disciple should never try to surpass the previous Acharya. So Balabha Acharya was making some mistake there in etiquette that he was surpassing the previous Acharya, the, uh, the original Acharya in commenting on Srimad Bhagavatam. So this whole section is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita and it was published in Back to Godhead. So we have many Pushtimarg people who are life members. And in India they would often send the Back to Godhead magazine to the life members. So some life members got the Back to Godhead and some of them read it and they did not like it because they were followers of Balabhacharya. Balabhacharya was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to them. They call him Mahaprabhu. And they did not like it and what happened was they went to Srimati Morariji, the lady who sent Prabhupada to America and they said, look, you sent this man to America. Look what he's teaching. And so Srimati Morariji was quite shocked because Prabhupada had personally cultivated the relationship with this lady. He, she was a very staunch devotee of Lord Krishna and she's also Pushti Marg, a follower of Balabhacharya. And Prabhupada was writing Srimad Bhagavatam at the time and he, he needed funds to print the first canto. So he, he, knew, he knew her name, he knew about her, so he went to see her and he was able to impress her. She was impressed with Prabhupada and she donated for the printing of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then later on, then Prabhupada got her to send him to America on one of her ships. So when she was approached by these other people, these life members of ISKCON, and they were saying, look what this man is teaching. So she wrote to Prabhupada about this and inquired that why, why is it like this? You're, you're publishing like this in the Back to Godhead magazine. So Srila Prabhupada wrote back to her and he quoted the saying, Satyam Bruyat Priyam Bruyat. And Prabhupada apologized. He said, I have to apologize on behalf of my disciples. They have not learned the etiquette that when they speak the truth, they should make it pleasing. He said they had, and Prabhupada quoted that Sanskrit, Satyam Bruyat Priyam Bruyat. And then Prabhupada went on and explained to her, he said, actually when Lord Chaitanya said this to Balabha Acharya, it was said in a joking way. It was not a criticism. It was said, in, and he explained to her that Lord Chaitanya and Balabha Acharya were actually friends. They had a friendly relationship. And uh, 
in this way Prabhupada somewhat pacified Srimati Morariji. So this is one example of uh, politics that you've, even in spiritual life there can often be politics and dealings between devotees. There can be politics. We have to be very careful, very conscious, not to allow Kali to enter into our midst and uh, pollute our consciousness. If we start to argue with each other, then that is the influence of the age of Kali. We are allowing Kali to enter into our association. We want to... Jai Maharaj, welcome. Bring a... have we got a cha chair for Maharaj? Bring a chair for yeah. Maharaj. So we just I I just want to bring out the point that we want to be conscious uh, not to become involved in politics in arguing and quarreling because it easily happens in the Kali Yuga and especially in your home also. You know, you want to keep the peace at home. You want to live peacefully. And that way you will all be happier. Nowadays, you know, in Prabhupada's time we were ashram based. My god brother Bhaktivikas Swami has been speaking about how ISKCON has changed over the years. Yes, certainly, it's changed. And you have to expect change. We have to expect things will change. So, in Prabhupada's time we were ashram based. Jananda Maharaj and I were young men in our twenties. <laughs> And we were living in the ashram. The devotees were all living in the ashram. And we supported the ashram by Sankirtan and book distribution. Today things are a bit different. We don't have many people living in the ashram. It would be nice to have more people live in the ashram. But Unfortunately, people grow up, people get a bit older, they get married, they get married, you have to have your own home. And so it becomes, our movement has developed like that. The, the devotees are more based in the, in the home rather than in the ashram. So we have devotees, more devotees. And I hope they're happier devotees as well. But we have more devotees and they're living at home. They're not living in the ashram. But still, Krishna consciousness is going on. You go to the home of devotees and they're worshipping Krishna. They have a nice altar. Jaipataka Swami sometimes will do a Zoom and he'll visit his home, the home of all of his disciples and he'll, want, he'll say to them, show me your altar. And each devotee will show their altar and how they've decorated their altar. And Jai Pataka Swami will give his appreciation or some comment. And so nowadays it's like that. You know, we show people, oh here's our altar, we have our temple here. but. Everyone else, you have your home and you have your altar at home and you're worshipping Krishna there. So things have changed, but still Krishna is there. Krishna is in the center and that is very important for us. 
that we want to keep Krishna always in the center of all of our activities. We, so long as Krishna is in the center, then our movement is healthy and the devotees are progressing in their spiritual life. But if money becomes in the center, our economic problems, our economic issues, or our children's education, if these things are put in the center more than Krishna, then it's not very good for us. Of course, these things are also important. You have to have money, you have to, your children have to have education, other things are also required, but we cannot forget Krishna. We must always keep Krishna there. The spiritual aspect of life has to be there in our own life. If our spiritual practice is forgotten just for the material purposes, then we will run into problems. As soon as we forget Krishna, immediately the Maya is there, right? Krishna, Surya, Tama, Maya, Haya, Andika. So wherever there is Krishna, there is light. And wherever there is no Krishna, then the darkness is there. So we, we want to encourage all of you to keep your Krishna consciousness, keep your homes Krishna conscious and stay strong in your spiritual practice. And that way you'll overcome all the difficulties. You come and sit there. Chananda Maharaj, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you late? <laughs> I remember more than 20 years ago, Jananda Maharaj was telling me there's this nice brahmachari in Malaysia. He said, whenever he gives lectures, he'll break into song. Right? So, I was hearing about you even before I ever came to Malaysia. Actually, I spoke to Jananda Maharaj. The first meeting with Jananda Maharaj, he took me to for Sangirtan and KL. And he told me to come in time. Come back in time. So I was listening late. Maharaj said, you are idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to say something on the verse, Maharaj? No, we're running an hour, one hour late. It's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spontaneous. Well, the good fortune and privilege to be here today. We found out maybe a few days ago that uh, today Maharaj was uh, here and we're honoring his Lhasa Puja. We thought, I guess. I may want to talk more on that because I suppose. And we're on today's verse of Krishna is so nicely shared, um, very practical, 
personal aspect of the verse which we read today, we should actually call it the Durham Consultation. Um, and we should all be being rejected, rejected. Um, even Krishna's consultation. Um, so what, what can I say other than what might have already reiterated or expressed to us? Thinking in terms of the point of politics, which is an underlying factor of this whole topic of the intrigue which takes place even amongst family members. We have, even amongst us, the, the intrigue takes place even among some family members here in Malaysia, so everywhere. As Mara said, it's the influence of Khalifa. Politics is how it's a dirty word in most cases, to use it in a rather derogatory way, although in terms of its actual essential definition, politics is the, you can say, the mechanism to enact the policy and Prabhupada has given us that policy to follow materially we have so many different, uh, let's say, responsibilities, different occupations, we condition differently, we see things differently. The real counsel, the real politics is that which brings us to see things with Krishna in the center. I emphasizing for the devotees, especially those who are living at home. And as you already heard, look at how this movement has changed in its dynamics, not in its purpose, not in its essential um, objective, but in its, uh, say, organization, in its structure in terms of the devotees uh, almost exclusively in most countries. Uh, not in India so much. In India we have, as you may know, thousands of brahmacharis in the ashram. Some of the ashrams have two to three hundred brahmacharis. Um, we used to have here in Malaysia at the peak around twenty to thirty brahmacharis in the uh, late eighties early 90s and that's when Maharaj Kukunda Maharaj came in. During that period of time, even Bhakti Lakash Swami Maharaj, who um, he was preaching a lot in Bangladesh and then in India. But he would he asked if he could send Ramacharas here to Malaysia to train. But some Bhakti Lakash Maharaj was world renowned for his uh, staunch spiritual practices and his training Brahmachari handbook and uh, Brahmachari and Krishna Consciousness Handbook but this is before he published that book and some of that was based upon his experience. He was here in Malaysia a lot in the 80s if you remember in Babo he was quite active here on and off over a period of years. Um, he was a little, I mean, I'll just tell you something funny and it has nothing to do with the verse, but it's something to do with what Wunderman said about our first meeting. Um, I came here at the very beginning of 1984 to Malaysia. And Bhakti Vakash was on his way out. Um, he was basically told, in England they say, on your bike, on your bike, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, he was too heavy. We were talking about Priyam Bruin, Sachin Bruin, Priyam Bruin earlier on. He was too heavy. And you remember? I mean, relatively speaking, he was normal, but for the situation here, he was too heavy. <laughs> yeah, we've gone through a lot of turmoil. Maybe 
before, and I don't know any of you know much about that era, but in 1983 there was a complete, you could say, shake-up of the politics the administration here. We have a GBC body which we're supposed to consult to try to get good guidance and so on. So it was clearly obvious that the GBC who was mentioned here was not in line with uh, you know, many of the policies that were set in motion. So it was removed. It created quite a turmoil. You may have been not around it in that area of Akhi Rajendramaj was here then and uh, was a rock in the sense of um, I was speaking this morning to Radharaj's wife at Sude, you know, Sude. I was speaking to her this morning. She was, well, not to us don't know, they were, they were really heroes during that period of time. The devotees were staying in their house. And the Ravi Lochan and Tatra did in their families, they were like the, they kept um, presenting the person, the Ravi Vindal and Chandra and his wife. They were like, kept the movement going here in Malaysia, Islam. There were hundreds of devotees still following the previous QBC guru, and it was quite a battlefield. It was an easy situation to say the least. So, Brother Vishnu Prabhu, who would become a little involved here in, uh, in Malaysia, came along and he um, was, became the regional secretary in those days, we call it regional secretary under Jabhatak and Manchus. Inspiration. Banam Raj was here when I first came. And uh, it, was, it was really, there were very few, it was just a handful of us, really staying in the temple, and back to the Kashmir was a, he was a plan to go. So they, he invited me in because I was known as a bit more gentle. I was called a gentle fanatic. Contrary <laughs> <laughs> to what my experience I had. If they didn't buy to the Kashmir, <laughs> you probably would have been <laughs> running for your life. <laughs> I don't know, but he was quite... Uh, um, but I was also asked to get on your bike journey after about three months. <laughs> <laughs> I used the word karmi in a class, and that was one word too many. You couldn't even say karmi in those no. days in the congregation. It was considered to be a derogatory term. Amazing, you know. Um, but anyway, Krishna has a yeah, we'll plans to no, move all around. We've got time. Yes, we've got, 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 got up until two o'clock. Right. And the other devotees are not taking Perfect breakfast, are they? Yeah. Did you cook breakfast for them? Huh? For everyone. Politics means to help everybody to find their place in society. Well, it's we're just controlling the essential realm to be what we have been given by God oh. in our national system. It's very, it's not like boxing people into positions forcing them to act according to one's will. It's a scientific arrangement to accommodate the individuality of the living entities and is guided by Ashram. So that's the book. The objective goal of the structure is, of course, to surrender to Krishna, to become Krishna conscious. So it's a lot easier if a person is situated according to their body in Ashram. And that is the real business of Shatriya to do that, to uh, facilitate, not to control them, not to exploit them, but to actually assist them in their sadharma, both material and spiritual, and their occupational responsibilities. This movement started really from, as you all know, from what can we say, Varna Shankar. Prabhupada started in New York. You can say everyone who came to Prabhupada, seriously speaking, was hardly following Brahma Shram. They were following the path of sense gratification. Extremely. And Prabhupada, somehow or another, and his purity, and his devotion, his Krishna consciousness, was able to inspire and transform the lives of millions of people. Now we see 
here in this country when, as I said, about half a dozen devotees were there in the temple when I came. Bhana Maharaj left shortly after, but he began to last with their Vendal and Chandra was still working. He joined full time shortly after, more or less, he was living in the home and coming. But there was not more than half a dozen of us living in the temple, and that was it. Just a few devotees in BA, and one or two is not the Lord is scattered around. Not more than 12 to 20 servants is from the rules. And now we see in Malaysia, I don't know how many, thousands of devotees. And what is the next stage? That will be interesting. It's um, not for that phase. We have a, a swing. People Sindhu came in and he was part of the natural part of that swing. Singeshwar, Sri Baranga, Siddhi Sadhana, Masitrayana, Deva Deva, Lord Swami, and so many others, um, Sayananda, were in the first wave, Rasaraj, and so many ladies, and then from the congregation also, were part of that uh, swing, Kamalakar, and others uh, were part of that era. And now uh, another, we seem to be in a, an era now moving forward, in a different way. What do you think the next stage is? As you're preaching here, I'm only a visitor here. I can't speak. I think uh, most of the Kriyas in Malaysia are ready for sannyas. <laughs> ready for sannyas? <laughs> and Vanapurista, uh, many of them are uh, ready for sannyas. <laughs> Your wife is ready. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? There she is, hiding over there behind her hand. Are you ready? <laughs> Carry on. Uh, many, now we have got many wonderful sites in Malaysia. Uh, many of them uh, do not know which directions to move in the Krishna consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give my uh, honest opinion today because today is uh, Nashima Maharaj appearance day. Uh, I felt that you know everything has to be according to the path of Dharma. So we have got today uh, plenty and plenty of wonderful stars in Malaysia. Practically, they do not know what the next thing they should do in their life. Can't you sort them, but not project. They're supposed to give up the family life, give up the house and go to the forest. After 50 years of age. So, uh, like those days when we joined, Bhakti Vidyendra Nandana Maharaj was the backbone of the organization in Malaysia. Practically, I joined because of the pressure and push it by Bhakti Vrindavan and Nandana Maharaj. Every time I come to the temple, he would call me to his room. He said, oh, no, what's your name and what you are doing? The moment I said about my job, he would say, it's Maya. <laughs> and the moment he said, come and join the organization, I said, I got to do something for my parents. He said, oh, Maya. <laughs> The two things that uh, Maharaj has you know, uh, uh, said that you know, always in my mind is that every moment when he speaks something, he quotes Prabhupada, he says Prabhupada, 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 and the next thing he will say Maya, Maya, Maya. <laughs> Everything that was Prabhupada was Maya. No, it wasn't Prabhupada, it wasn't Maya. No, everything that was not Prabhupada. Yeah, that's, that's right, that's right. So, then Maharaj really want us to join full time and contribute to Prabhupada movement just by his purity and his you know, part of you know, principle of Dharma he followed very strictly we are inspired to join the organization and today all these kind of words what Maharaj have told us may become an abuse in the organization and a lot of videos I see I see the Guriyas are themselves and many have to do a great job with their own children because there are many of our Guriyas children in Malaysia not, not that participating in an organization 
many are not coming to the temple, many are not chanting, we have, we have got a very handful of, uh, of uh, devotee children really contributing to the progress of the organization. I sometimes have felt it could be like, you know, we could make like, a, they got uh, rules in Thailand and Myanmar where the every of you know their, their citizen should join the monastery for at least for two years after the education. At least I thought you know if our children uh, if they can get some sort of the kind of uh, you know uh, opportunity to come and stay in the temple at least for six months and they see the austerity the others are contributing and that will inspire them because when they go and stay in the monastery. Even today we go to Thailand or Myanmar, you know, very hardly uh, any people are uh, you know, converting to Christianity or Islam because they've got that, that strong foundation of their you know, philosophy and their practice. So I felt like uh, the Vanaprasa, uh, I feel a lot of lots of them, they found, you know, today they are free, they do not know what to do, some of them try to go and get another job. Some drive, drive, you know, drive, come, go and get a security job. It's not their lack of money, but they do not know what to do in their life. And many Manapurs are very busy taking care of their grandchildren. And, they, you know, and, and the philosophically, they go and preach to the people how to become detached. So it makes it very difficult for our organization you know, for us to preach anything very purely because. Our own elders are not showing that kind of uh, commitment and austerity in the organization. So, from a very difficult stage in our preaching in Malaysia from 1980s, today we have come to the very comfortable zone. So, we are many are uh, trying to preach like uh, Acharya, but you know, when it comes to Acharya, to practice what we speak, you know, very difficult to see because the organization now in Malaysia, you know, it's made of 99% of are made up of a Piriyasa. In our time it was mainly Vokramitari. So I think any changes to come in Malaysia has to begin with the Piriyasa community. And today even the Piriyasa, they think that you know, Brahmachari Ashram is a joke. <laughs> they don't encourage their children to go and stay in the temple and do anything. But they found that you know, many Brahmacharis who have joined that day, they got married and then they took up uh, you know, Griya Sarsham. But the one thing they don't realize that many who have joined the organization and the Brahmachari later, they become a Griya star. And many have got a very good and strong foundation in their Krishna consciousness. So I feel that you know, to do anything in our organization, we need a great you know, commitment and contribution from our Griya stars and wonderful stars. Especially in Malaysia, because lots of lots of you know, devotees are retiring, they become your Vanapur staff. And they con contribute so much. The other day I was talking to one of the Vanapur staff and he was giving some idea. I said, idea anybody can give. You know, but the important thing is that 30, 40 years they have been you know, working with the, at the you know, social order, they've been holding some great position, they're very highly educated and they worked in that environment for 30, 40 years. That means they got so much of uh, so much of experience. Maybe the the one of the stars are very angry. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel uh, they have got a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom in their life. Where they were holding that position and they were working for themselves, they were contributing for the. Know, for the people of our side, but today when they retire, they got all this experience and wisdom. They are holding it inside, but you know, it's not you know contributing for the for the upliftment and progress of the organization. I feel all of them should you know come forward and try to help the whole organization. And uh, things are not going very well with the political situation and economic situation in, in this country. So we have to educate our own people how to take care, you know, even Even today it's not about you know, trying to go and save the people from outside. It's already about saving our own family and children in Krishna consciousness. Become a, a bigger <laughs> challenge. So with this thing I am I'm also, you know, very happy that Maharaj, all of you, you know, coming and contributing, you know, your your services, your contribution for Malaysian Yatra.
definitely it will make a lot of changes. Because generally, Prabhupada says, he brought the white elephant to India. <laughs> so we need the more white elephant from British, from Britain. Britain, yeah. Yeah, Britain. Scotland. Huh? Scotland. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and we also need a lot of sannyas in Malaysia. And I felt a lot of Vanaprasa also. Some of them are very qualified to take sannyas. And among the brahmachari like you know, Sri Chaitanya and Kirpa Sindhu, Mahavara, there are very good brahmacharis and contribute so much for the organization. I think we should encourage them. And also there should be a lot of gurus in Malaysia. And especially there should be a lot of local gurus because they can go around like last time and Bhakti Vrajendra Nandra Maharaj going around. So people felt, you know, he is one of their family members, he was very fatherly. And he advises them, and then from him we have learned a lot of detachment and austerity. I felt, you know, for the organization to grow more bigger and spread, you know, quite in Malaysia, we have to have a lot of sannyas, we have to have a lot of gurus, and we have to know, have a lot of wonderful careers. But definitely the organization will flourish in Malaysia. A very challenging time with Malaysia, it's a Kaliuga. Uh, things are going to be, you know, worse in time to come. Before those things come, we should be prepared and we should be ready to you know, counteract whatever negative influences that are coming in our life. So with this thing, I'd like to um, thank Maharaj for coming here. And uh, then uh, Maharaj comes here. And today somebody, here, 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 <laughs> somebody here. told me today, he said, yesterday asked me, he's also from Australia, he said, you know, is Ananda Maharaj around here? I say, yes, he's a great joker. <laughs> <laughs> You're really good joker. <laughs> no, he is. What you say. Yeah, Maharaj, you know, what to do, there's a, there's a reality happening in the world. <laughs> You're very nice. I'll oh, forgive you. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a year of forgiveness, so I'll forgive you. Yeah. It's definitely just a quick follow on. Um, thank you very much. Interesting points. Um, I would say two, I would say more maybe. Two points there um, which you just comment on. One is Vana Prasta. Um, it's something which is not so clearly defined in our movements. Maybe the other ashrams are a little bit more easy to ascertain their position. But the Vanaprasta ashram, in many ways, is the most essential ashram in our society, in many ways. It didn't exist before, it's only a recent last decade or two it's become a reality. Um, and traditionally, it is the Vanaprastas who are the leaders in society spiritually. Initiation is given by Vana Prasas. Gurukuls are run by Vana Prasas. Tradition. It's a, it's a big subject. Now, if you want to find out a little bit more, we actually, I, I don't know if you I compiled a manual on Vana Prasas 23 years ago. And that is still available. Now, um, in consultation, Jai Rajamaj, she's put the uh, Vana Prasas Ashram manual printed form, so right now it's just manuscript form. So um, that may be coming to print shortly. That will give you a little bit of inspiration <laughs> and a little direction. Um, of course, it's time, place, and circumstance. Every individual is different. But the principles are the same, how to move forward, how to actually, not just the retirement, it's not retirement in a sense, it's actually in, in, expanding our devotional responsibility in a way which is effective, guiding the younger devotees. And the other point is what Maharaj said about giving initiation and having local groups. Um, whether this is the next phase in our group, many of us think it is. I'm also on that page. So let us see. But that will be a, a very interesting, a very another, let's say, revolutionary stage in our group. I think that people could emerge would be one of them on that list. Nobody wants to take initiation from me. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But it's a fact. 
not only because of logistics that the world is like ourselves, you know, it's a little ancient in age, and uh, it's not going to be long before you will not see any direct disciples who should have come on that press. We want everyone to be able to fix it with some policy. But as far as the continuation of the necessary uh, process of addiction, uh, it's a subject which let's see what Christians plan, policy on that will be. You have to be open. Krishna can empower the world is what you may think is impossible. You know, this movement is really an impossible. This is impossible, what has happened. The transformation that has taken place in the world. One person, Sri Prabhupada, going alone, with no support, as much as you have heard about, was a sympathizer, not like a follower, a support remainder. Other than that, Prabhupada had really no backing, no support anywhere, even from his own God, speaker people in general, but still Krishna's will through Sri Bhava, and you can see what a miracle is taking place. Here in Malaysia it's also miraculous, although we still a long way to go, that there are thousands and thousands of devotees in this country. They, we all need training. Training never stops. Being guided, just like the Guru is a guide, whether you accept it or not. In fact, even Shimon is just one of the heroes. He's one of the best examples of guys in our movement. But one who is following by this example. He's guided by example as well as by words. Mukundra Maharaj also here in Malaysia wants to establish training. I don't know exactly what direction or area, but the principle we need, we need that guidance. We need it. Uh, at every stage, it's not like, oh, I've been in the room for 30 years, I know it all. It never comes to that. And as you say, I don't know, you know better than I, like many other senior devotees who come to the retired stage of like 60, 65 years, 70 years old, age, or one who want to do. So obviously, they need some guidance, direction. Hare Krishna. Bhakti Vignashna Srinamaraj Ki Jai His Holiness Bhakti Vignashna Srinamaraj Ki Jai His Holiness Jananda Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai His Holiness Bhakti Makunda Maharaj Jai Prasadam Ki Jai We won't go any more than one hour over time, right? We're already one hour late. So Prasadam is available for everyone. We'll stop here. Everyone take some prasadam. And we still follow the principle of the disciples fast. <laughs> well, not so many disciples. <laughs> <laughs> I know but many things have been dropped over the years. You know, so many we'll try. My take on it also is where there are ashrams and temples. It's like the heart of the, of the spiritual pulse, and they should be respected, highly respected. The temple is not a social club. The temple is not a political center. The temple is a place where you come to get recharged. And those in the temple should be in that spirit. They shouldn't be running around trying to make money. They shouldn't be running around trying to keep it going. They should be studying the Prabhupada's books carefully disseminating that knowledge when they're ready to others. It should be a spiritual aid. That's my perspective of the temple. Temples will be few, far between in terms of structure. They will be in every problem. But as far as buildings, you know, there's another... Other things will be required. Social events, educational institutions, economic development amongst the world. So many other aspects of who need to be developed. The temple should be not that everything has to be done from the temple. The temple is the Brahminical part of society. It should be very Brahminical.
everything else is equally important, but it should be in its rightful place. The farms, whatever it is, businesses, organization of social structures, etc. needs to be done also. The temple is the formidable head system to Brahman. So we ask Brahman. So the Brahman shares ideally would be they're studying, training, teaching, preaching, going out on Sankirtan. We hardly see anyone in this country doing book distribution. It's embarrassing. There's hardly one or two devotees here and there on a festival dinner. But I have a brahmachari here. Stand up. We're going to take a nap. Just go over this way. Oh, I'm sorry. He's very tall. You can't miss him. He is so frustrated, he can't find one devotee anywhere to go on Sankirtan. He's so frustrated. And he doesn't know what to do. He's eating like an elephant right now to do that for this time. He doesn't know what else to do. That's not the business of a brahmachari is to go out and, you know, just do books. That's what they should be doing. Studying the books and distributing the books. They're not here to run around doing that right and center. They do that also. And that's the opportunity for the great masters to come forward. Do that. Especially the battle process. Ideal time for puja, for preaching, for whatever. It's the right time at all. Don't look at the students. Most of them will get married and should get married. But they're students. They should be acting like that under the guru. So to speak. The guru, guru. But that principle is there. And the temple should be like, when you come here, you become inspired. There's no gossip in the temple, please. There's no mobile phones going on in the temple either. Right? You turn it off. Don't let it go off. You burn, burn, it it off. Huh? burn it off. Burn it off. Burn it off. Add it in. You can confiscate it. <laughs> Make some money for the temple. <laughs> anyway, we would. You know, it would be wonderful if the Brahmacharis, it could be such a facility where Brahmacharis can actually have that opportunity. You know? I think so. Instead of having to manage temples and, you know, run around doing that kind of center trying to keep the show on the road. They've got more important business to do, studying scriptures, and becoming, you know, leaders, spiritual leaders in the, in the world today. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, uh, you welcome uh, all of you and uh, <laughs> uh, Maharaj would like to invite you to uh, breakfast in the conference room and for all devotees you are invited for breakfast now. Uh, the Yasa Puja celebrations will start at 10 30 sharp. So please order your prasada as soon as possible. And uh, <laughs> please, please, you mean tonight or this morning? <laughs> 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 uh, since I can't take sannyas yet. But I'm offering my services, been doing that. Uh, I do Bhakti Shastri class in Tamil with the blessings from my Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Jayapadaka Maharaj. And also Zoom Guru, both are both in Zoom. So anybody interested in letting your child join during these holidays, as well as every Saturday, Sunday. Every Saturday and Sunday, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. Tomorrow is my next class. Tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, if you give me your uh, telephone number, you'll, you'll join the... Yeah, they are coming. They are, they are great. <laughs> uh, no, I have children who are waiting for me in half an hour. I start at 7 o'clock. So I do both in Tamil and English. The Bhakti Shastri class is 100% Tamil, but those who are interested can read Tamil and English, please join me. Okay, and it's a reading class. That means I did one class with 22 uh, older students. Uh, we did complete reading from page to page, front page to back page. 
Okay, all grant and then meet the requirements, uh, slokas and also assignments. Not as serious as the Mayapur Institute Later, per se, they but with their blessings. And my Guru Maharaj blessing. And then there are some here who have done with me. Uh, they put up your hand, those who followed the last batch. But I am more interested, as we see in Gurukul. Children are sitting at home, okay, in the holidays. So I would like to have, I have students up to university. Joins my Gurukul. Okay. <laughs> I have one student who well, sisters, three sisters from four, from five, and university uh, joining in. I'll teach all the basic requirements uh, in your uh, daily spiritual life, plus Brahma Samhita and Sat uh, and so many others, plus moral values. Thank you. Arigo. Arigo. So I left the 25 minutes of the Hare Krishna. See you later.